The Polar 65 from Arbiter is by far the best quality pre-built analog rapid trigger keyboard, but in my opinion it definitely is not a wooting killer. What it lacks is the firmware of the keyboard and in that matter it falls short of the legendary wooting 60HE. Let me explain why. What is the point of rapid trigger keyboard? Well, the idea is that your key resets as soon as you start lifting it up and then activates again after you start pressing it down. And here's how most keyboards do it. You have a set travel distance after which the keyboard activates, right? For example, one millimeter. After it passes one millimeter, rapid trigger kicks in. And when you lift your key, let's say 0.1 millimeter up, it resets back so you can start activating it again. And then when you start pressing it, after a defined travel distance, let's assume it's 0.1 millimeter, it activates again. This is how it should be done and this is how it's done on most keyboards. As an example, here's the already mentioned wooting. There you can set the actuation level, downstroke sensitivity and upstroke sensitivity. All works really well and is really precise. Now, here's how it works on the Polar 65 bar Arbiter Studio. The software is really simple and easy to use, which is a good thing. There's no overwhelming amount of options to choose from. You can set the actuation and rapid trigger sensitivity. There's also RGB settings, but that's not important here. Let's set the actuation point to 0.8 millimeters and the rapid trigger to 0.1 millimeter. What I expected would happen is that the key would activate at 0.8 millimeters and then when I lift it up 0.1 millimeter, it would reset and would activate again after I press the button down 0.1 millimeter. This is how most rapid trigger keyboards work. The rapid trigger sensitivity works both ways, with the same value. On Polar 65, when the key resets, it needs to travel another 0.8 millimeters down in order to activate. And in my opinion, this is a bad implementation of rapid trigger feature. Sure, you can set actuation to 0.1 millimeter, but believe me, the amount of accidental inputs will be horrendous. The keys basically activate as soon as you brush them with your fingertip and it's really bad for both typing and gaming. The only reasonable option here is to set the rapid trigger to let's say 0.2 millimeters so it's not too sensitive and the actuation to around 0.4, 0.5 millimeters. This way there's a smaller risk of accidentally activating the wrong key. Another thing I notice is there's a small dead zone when you bottom out the key around half a millimeter and when you start lifting the key up, rapid trigger even at 0.1 millimeter sensitivity won't kick in. Of course, this might not be a deal breaker for some of you and that's fine. Like I said, you can work around it with a proper setting. But honestly, I prefer we wouldn't have to do that. After all, other keyboard companies were able to get it right. And hopefully Arbiter Studios will work on improving their firmware and software for the keyboard and fix this issue in the future releases. If they do, this will become an S-tier keyboard. Other than that, like I said before, I really do like the keyboard's build quality. It has a solid and beautifully crafted aluminum case with nice rounded edges which match really well with the keycaps. The sound profile is also really present straight out of the box, so let's do a quick sound test. I really wanted to like the Polar 65 and initially I really did. Great build quality, good typing experience, good sound and very affordable price when it comes to rapid trigger keyboards at least. But I was really disappointed by the implementation of rapid trigger feature here. I think it's just inferior to other keyboards. And that's it in today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Laser, and I'll see you in the next video.